Alessandro and I both gave the Chimay Blue really, really high scores. It wasn't quite a perfect beer. Will the Chimay Red be a perfect beer? It's missing a little bit of that, like... It's so already the perfect beer streak is broken with the first rating. It feels like I have a whole weight on my shoulders. Like, yeah, it's, I know, but I'm sorry. sorry. That's just how I feel about it. I'm sorry with with you 100%. You do the, the minerality. That was a great word that you used. So there, I'm actually going to give it a one on three. Well, welcome back everybody to Beer Brackets. We're finally, Alessandro, at this very important extremely important review because we are closing out the big three of the Chimay Trappist Brewery. We've already reviewed the Chimay Grand Reserve, we've reviewed the Chimay Première, and now we are reviewing the Chimay Whitecap, as it was once called, the Chimay White. They're triple. So with the blue was the quad, the red was the double. Now we are moving on to the triple. Guys, we're not gonna go too deep onto the history of the Chimay Brewery. Again, we covered that in the Chimay Grand Reserve episodes. If you haven't seen that, go check that out down below. You can learn all about the Abbey down there in Chimay, Belgium, right by the border to France. I think you're like me, right? You've only had this one a few times and it's been a little while since the last time you did? You are absolutely correct, my friend. Uh, I think I, I was trying to think about when I had it last time uh, before the review here and it's been a long time. So I'm excited to get back into it and uh, experience this beer almost like if it was the first time. So these guys like the red and like the blue. The Chimay White is extremely, extremely highly rated in the world of triples. So this one is actually one of their newest beers. So this one is from the 60s. Father, Father Theodore, good old Father Theodore, who popularized the yeast, the Chimay yeast, that gives the Chimay beers that distinctive characteristic that they all have. This was the last brew that he put together and came up with, his last recipe. Chimay Triple is an amber blonde beer. It's golden in color and manages successfully to combine smoothness and tartness. This highly refreshing beer is unique. Just like its bottled version, it's neither filtered nor pasteurized and referments in 20 liter barrels for three weeks. So Father Theodore, here's to you, good sir. The one of the last great beer wizards. <laughs> You're looking for wizards looking over for there. Wizards. You're wizard hunting. <laughs> <laughs> Should we crack these open and get right into it? Let, let's I want to drink it, some Chimay. <laughs> yeah, I am ready to drink some triple. Let's do it. Let us pour them out. Ooh, oh, look, look at, at that. that. This one has been sitting in my fridge for about six months. <laughs> <laughs> Just maybe not six months, a couple of months. I, we've been waiting forever to film. Oh, look at that, man. Look at the carbonation on this one. That's amazing, isn't it? These Trappist triples, I mean, a characteristic. And this one specifically, I believe, I was reading that it's bottle fermented, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Um, they don't specify that it is, but just judging by that level of carbonation, it's it seems like it obviously is. You're, you're looking at almost a 50-50 split there between the actual body and head of the beer and carbonation, which is fantastic. My friend, I will let you get right into it. Let me know, aroma cheers. Aroma cheers, my friend. It, it definitely has characteristics that bring bring this beer in the triple style, but I will also say that it's for a triple, it, it's it's quite interesting. It's quite, very different than compared to others that I've had recently. It definitely, uh, the, the main predominant uh, aromas that I get are that yeast, uh, that comes across, uh, there's almost this, um, I don't want to call it like, it's not floral. It's almost like, uh, yeah, um, I know. I want to say almost like white wine, like, uh, oh, I don't know if that makes sense, but I was thinking like, something that I was hoping that you would get it, but white wine is actually even better. 
it, it's I don't want to say grapes, but it, it has a little bit of that like white wine similarities aroma. And without getting into yeah. specifics of what wine, obviously, but it's if you're just closing your eyes, like it, you might forget for a second that it's beer. Like, and that that's actually incredibly interesting to me. Uh, honestly, like uh, for the aroma itself, like it has all the best elements of the triple. It adds these uh, floral slash white wine aromas like uh, it's gonna get a three for me like right off the bat like this is this is pretty pretty intense and amazing aroma for me the wine that you were thinking of was it like a chardonnay yeah absolutely like it would fit within like the like you know that, that almost acidic kind of like grapey one word one descriptor that i was thinking of that i thought you were going to mention but you went straight to wine yes wine once you said wine it triggered something in my mind where that's all i smell now but originally I was smelling bubble gum. If you stick your nose in there yeah. and you think bubble gum, you know, like a Bazooka Joe, like a stereotypical kind of like pink, hot pink stick of bubble gum. Yep. But now that you said wine, that's all I get. But yeah, it's very, very fruity, very sweet and very floral. You don't get very much maltiness. I mean, a little bit is there. There's kind of like a little hint at the end of the aroma of a little bit of toasted bread but it's really that fruity floralness like a white wine that's a beautiful descriptor it's a three on three for me as well it's actually it's making me salivate i want to go in and take a sip speaking of sips my friend cheers 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 let's take those first sips let me know what you think Man, you know, now that I said bubble gum, it's all I'm smelling and tasting. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get away from it. It's stuck in my mind, man. I can't. Well, it. but okay. you know, bubble gum is, is a good descriptor for, you know, that yeast component. A lot of people like, you know, yeah. banana, bubble gum, like it, it, they're depending on the style. And I, yeah, I, now that you mentioned it too, I could, I could smell it after you said it. Like, it's kind of like you, you're painting those pictures in somebody else's head when you're saying those things. I know, right? Like it's, um, it's pretty amazing how descriptors, you can plant descriptors in people's minds. It's almost like descriptor inception. So what do you think about the taste? Wow, it's uh, it's, it's quite incredible. I absolutely did not remember it being like this. Uh, and I guess like probably because in the meantime, like I've had more triples. Uh, so I yeah. so probably have more elements to compare with compared to the last time I've had it. It has this incredible, like the maltiness is there, that the sweetness, but it, it's very subtle. It's not the main element that plays. Like I think like the bitterness um, in forms of hop like comes across like almost immediately. But then like it dissipates very gently, smoothly in a way that I've never experienced. Normally it's like stays and lingers like on the back of your palate for quite a bit and it builds up. And again, like the best descriptor I can find of like it's white wine, floral slash like grapey taste that it's very difficult to pinpoint. Uh, those are the best descriptor I can think of. But I mean, man, taste wise, I got to have to stick with the three here still. Like there's no triple that I've had that tastes like this. You know, it's funny, I was reading Beer Advocate while we were actually both checking out Beer Advocate before this, just to, we were curious to see where this would rank in terms of triples. And I remember I saw a comment of somebody who compared the taste to like spaghetti water, <laughs> which I found really funny because, but I kind of see what they mean because it's a little bit starchy and it's yeah, a little yeah. bit, um, you know, there's remnants of, of, of breadiness in there. There's remnants of the malt, I can um, see but that. at the same time, it's very sort of heavy and uh, astringent. It's very starchy. If and uh, you can feel the body, which you know factors into the mouthfeel. But um, there's so many different things going on there in the taste, and you do get that kind of diluted bread. So I like that spaghetti water. It's funny. I can't get that out of my head. Uh, but <laughs> here, I gotta take one more sip. It's so interesting. There's so many things going on. Everything that I mentioned, the aroma, you get a little bit of dark fruit in there, a little bit of clove. I find that clove taste is very, very strong for me. I mean, it's it's delicious. It's very unique. I don't think I've had a triple quite like this before. I'm gonna give it a three as well. So we're on a little bit of a perfect streak here so far, my friend. We got two three on threes, but now we have the mouthfeel. So you know what we have to do for mouthfeel, right? We gotta give it a little refresher. Oh, yes. A little bit of a pour into the glass. All right, man, what do you think? Let's see, let's see. That carbonation from the bottle fermentation is just top notch. Mouthfeel, it's 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 a little tricky. 
So I, I think that the carbonation is absolutely spot on. And I think that yeah. if we go back and watch our other reviews, I think the carbonation on, on all of their beers is absolutely spectacular. Like it's very well done. I would say that even more so than uh, on the red, like there's there's a little bit more of combination here in between the upfront of the mouthfeel that kind of like feels and coats your tongue, like and dissipates like this million bubbles. and And then, kind of transitions into this uh, this feeling that stays on your tongue and brings it on into the finish. But, and that's where I'm gonna have to say that uh, for me, that sticky, oily component that leaves that coating, let's call it coating, because uh, sticky and oily sticky coating. Like that, that coating on my tongue is lingering a little bit too much in terms of a mouthfeel for me to is give it, it a three. It's oh, absolutely no. a two. So let's call it a high two. Sorry, wizards. I can feel it, man. I can feel already. There's kind of like a, there's a pressure. There's like a very negative energy in the area right now that we broke, we broke this perfect beer streak. I can, I can feel it. Well, you know, it did pretty well. It kept the perfect beer streak going through the aroma, through the taste. You know, I, I know what you're saying. There is an oiliness, kind of a stickiness to the body of it that you feel it. I mean, it, it sticks around for a while after you take a sip. It coats your mouth and it's... I can see what you mean. And I think that kind of factor to the mouthfeel is something that would prevent me from wanting to drink more than one of these. And for that, it's going to have to lose a point because it's very heavy. It sticks around. It actually makes me salivate a lot after, but not in a way where you're kind of craving yeah. it. Uh, that high carbonation combined with that oiliness, stickiness that coats, I think it's it's still very, very good. It's still obviously very masterfully crafted, but it's gonna be, I think a two is very fitting. So I'm gonna go two as well for the mouthfeel. Uh, the finish, my friend, is something where I'm very interested to hear what you have to say about this, because this, by God, does this have an interesting finish. So what do you think? Yeah, I you just read my mind, my friend. I think um, the finish on this beer is been quite unique, um, but it's it's a unique beer in general. Like, but but the finish in particular. Let's start from the fact that the bitterness is showing uh, in a way uh, that it's incredible and completely different to any other beer I've had or specifically triple also. Yeah. Because it, it, it's building up, but it's building up in a different way. Like it, it just fades away at first. It just leaves this like extremely refreshing wine-like finish that lingers for quite a long time. And if you wait long enough, you do get that hint of bitterness coming back, or at least I do. And I find that like incredibly difficult to achieve because you're you're transitioning almost like from beer into a, a different element that is almost like wine-like. Yeah. And then you go back into this uh, almost hint like, no, hey, I'm, I'm still here. It's uh, it's me, come back. And <laughs> I'm still here, I'm still around. It's, yeah, it's 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 amazing. And uh, you know, when, when I find those finishes that like are incredibly complex, but also uh, very well balanced, complex, but balanced, those two things always make me tend to give a high score and I'm gonna give it a high score. I'm gonna give it a three here. The finish borders on something that I don't like but it doesn't quite hit it. And you you hit the nail on the head with the bitterness. La Fain du Monde, if you go back and watch our Fain du Monde review, which is interesting, because that's the number one currently in uh, September 2021, La Fain du Monde is the number one rated triple on Beer Advocate. If you go back and watch our review of Fain du Monde, the alcohol present on the finish was a huge negative from it. And this borders on that. It borders on assaulting your taste buds and your mouth with an obscene level of bitterness. And it hits you at first, you feel, you taste this bitterness that's coming, but then it just, like you said, it dissipates, it's gone. The bitterness is gone, but then it comes back. It comes back a little at the end, much like a white wine. And I love that wine comparison because wine, white wine is very similar. You get a hit of bitterness at first, then it settles into whatever tones, whatever elements you're gonna taste. And then that bitterness sort of finishes it off. It comes back at the end, right? And this is very similar. So it threatens to be something that I don't like, overly bitter, overly acidic, that just lingers for too long, but then it just doesn't linger. So you get, it's, it's amazing. So I, it's so unique. 
and you can tell it's so masterfully crafted. It is a three on three finish for myself as well. But now, you know, we get into the overall and the overall, we say this all the time, dude, where this is where intangibles come into play, all right? So now that we've broken down every individual element as an overall beer experience, the Chimay White Cap, the Chimay White, the Chimay saint -Saint, as it's called sometimes on the larger bottles, they're labeled saint, -Saint which is French for 500, for the 500th anniversary, the 500th year anniversary of Chimay itself. You know, uh, after having tried like a few sips of this uh, delicious beer and having meditated mindfully about it, I think uh, that it's, uh, like I've said a few times throughout the review, it's incredibly unique. I think it absolutely deserves a three uh, because it's, uh, it's so different compared to any other triple that I've had recently. And again, like I've had this before, but it was probably, uh, you know, one of the first triples I've ever had. Like, so it, it, it didn't, it was difficult for me to find like a comparison, but now that I've tried so many others, like this stands on its own and it's so incredibly unique. So yes, a three on three for me. This does stand on its own and it's, I think my favorite triple that I've had thus far is probably the Watu triple by St. Bernardus. We were talking about this earlier. Um, it's one that's a little bit hard to find. I was able to find it in a St. Bernardus mix pack here recently. I think overall, as an overall balanced triple, that one is my favorite that I've had. This one is so unique for all the reasons that we mentioned. So it got all those three on threes that we gave it as an overall experience. Well, it's gotta be a three on three. <laughs> it has to be. It has to be a three on three. I think this is probably the highest rated of the three Chimay beers. Yeah, it's it's I it's, it's gotta absolutely be absolutely right. Which is surprising because normally we trend towards the quads. I wasn't expecting this to do as well as it did, but it comes out to a four point six six on five, which in our rating system is an outstanding beer. You saw Sandra and I had the same opinion of it all the way through, which that doesn't happen very often either. Which for every category we have the exact same opinion of it, so it was pretty unanimous across the board, guys. Cheers to you. This closes out our little three episode series on the three main offerings of the Chimay Brewery. Those Trappist Wizards, my friend, they know what they're doing. They sure do. And no matter what you do, don't forget to close your Chimay beer brackets. Never, never forget. Maybe open with a white, with a white. Maybe have a red in between and close with a blue. <laughs> Why not? Go up the darkness scale, as you will. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Cheers. Mmm. So much bubble gum.